Welcome viewers. Today's session is food technology under which we will be studying about technology of pulses. Let us start with the introduction. Legumes or pulses are flowering plants in leguminaceae family. The term pulse has a more direct lineage. It derives from pulse or porridge, a cooked bean dish which is the ancient Romans were fond of eating. Pulses are the cheapest and richest source of protein. They are considered as lifeline for vast vegetarian population of India. Apart from being the good source of protein, pulses also contain substantial quantity of minerals, vitamins, crude fiber, etc. Amino acid composition of pulses is complementary to that of cereals. In India, pulses are the second major source of dietary protein after cereals. Legumes go through several processes before they are ready to be used as an ingredient in food preparations. These processes can include cleaning, drying, sorting, splitting, milling and fractionating. During milling, dal is split into smaller size which renders it convenient for cooking. Traditional methods for processing of pulses were labor intensive, time consuming and incurred losses. Modern technologies for processing of pulses have been replaced old age methods and thus avoid losses and saves time. Depending on the pulse and its intended use, other step like dehulling which is called as decorticating, roasting and grinding may be included as well. Byproducts of pulse plants are an excellent fuel and feed. With this introduction, let us start with the episode which deals with the following important subheadings. They are milling of pulses, then home scale milling, cottage scale milling, commercial scale milling and advances in milling technology. Let us start with milling of pulses. Pulses are mostly consumed in the form of dehusked splits which is commonly known as dal. The outer layer of the grain that is husk is attached to the protein and starch bearing cotyledons of the pulse grain. In some grains, this bonding will be very strong. The strongness is due to the presence of layer of gums in between the husk and the cotyledons. These type of pulses are known as difficult to mill pulses. The examples of difficult to mill pulses are urad bean, mung bean and pigeon pea. In other grains, this bonding is comparatively weaker. These grains can be milled easily and they are characterized as easy to mill pulses. The example of easy to mill pulses are chickpea, pea and lathyrus. The process of the removal of the husk from the cotyledons is called dehusking. The entire process of dehusking, subsequent splitting of cotyledons, its cleaning, polishing and grading is known as milling. The dehusking, it helps in improving the product appearance, texture, quality, palatability and digestibility. The significant amount of avoidable loss at different stages of milling which occurs, the losses may vary from 10 to 15 percentage and this loss depends upon the type and quality of the grain milled, the process and the machinery used for milling and other factors. It is therefore important to look at different aspects of milling. Proper process and machinery should be used to obtain maximum recovery of good quality dal from the grain. The milling of pulses, it involves two major steps. The first one is loosening of the husk and second one is removal of husk and splitting into cotyledons. The pre-milling treatments is given to almost all kind of pulses which helps in easy removal of husk. The processes and equipments for loosening of husk, separation of husk from cotyledons and its splitting differs. They differ from crop to crop, cultivator to cultivator and place to place. Dehusking is an age old practice. Dehusking was first originated at home and later developed in a cottage industry. 
Now it has grown into a large scale organized industry. With this, the four different types of milling of pulses are home scale milling, cottage scale milling, commercial scale milling and traditional milling. Let us start with home scale milling. Home scale milling involves mixing of grains first with water. The grains are sun dried followed by pounding for dehusking. Dehusking is carried out by using a mortar and pestle and drying in the sun for few hours. Sun drying after water application helps to loosen the husk from the cotyledons. In mortars, dehusking is achieved due to shearing action between pestle and grains and also the abrasive effect between the grains. Once the pounding is done for several minutes, the husk gets detached from the grains. Winnowing separates husk and split cotyledons. Cotyledons are separated from the whole dehusked and unhusked grains by manual sieving. The whole grains are again pounded for further dehusking and splitting. This technique of dehusking is adopted when small quantity that is up to 5 kg of pulses is to be dehusked. Dal yield by this process is quite very low which will be around 50 to 60 percentage. Breakage and chipping of the edges of cotyledons will be more. Now let us see cottage scale milling. Traditionally villagers use hand operated wooden or stone checky sheller when comparatively large quantities of pulses are to be dehusked. The technique is similar to those of home scale methods. Prior to milling, preconditioning of the grains is carried out. Preconditioning is done by two ways. First is by prolonged sun drying until the hulls are loosened and the second one is through application of water followed by several hours of sun drying and tempering. The heating of grains in pan with or without sand along with vigorous stirring is also in practice. The duration of treatment depends upon the variety of pulses to be milled. There are no standard dehusking techniques at the cottage level. At cottage level, often the husk is not completely removed and breakage is high. This reduces the consumer appeal and value of the product. The yield of dal obtained from this technique may vary in the range of 55 to 70 percentage depending upon the variety of pulse and pretreatment used. Now let us see commercial scale milling. Commercial scale milling involves processing large quantities of pulses in plants of bigger capacities. The basic milling procedure is similar. Dehusking methods may vary widely from one dal mill to another dal mill and from region to region. Two methods for large scale milling processing of pulses are in practice. They are traditional method and modern method. Traditional method most commonly followed by dal millers, it is almost similar to cottage level treatment in principles. Modern method milling which is developed by Central Food Technological Research Institute that is CFTRI Mysore which is independent of weather conditions. Now let us start with traditional milling. Traditional milling process varies from mill to mill and region to region and no standard or common processes is in practice. As shown in screen, you can see that traditional milling in different regions of India is different. In UP, MP and Karnataka, the seed material is first clean, then oil treatment is given followed by tempering, water soaking for 2 to 5 hours, then sun drying for 1 to 2 days and dehulling in stone chikki and dal is obtained. And in Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra, the seed material is first cleaned, then oil and turmeric treatment is given followed by tempering and then stored for 30 to 45 days, then dehulling in stone chikki and dal is obtained. In MP and Maharashtra, the seed material is first cleaned followed by water soaking for 8 to 14 hours, then sun drying for 1 to 2 days, primary milling is given and after that oil or water treatment is given, then again it is sun dried for 1 to 2 days, then dehulling in stone chikki and dal is obtained. In UP and MP, seed material is cleaned followed by water boiling of grains for 15 to 20 minutes, 
followed by sun drying for 1 to 2 days and dehulling in stone chakki and dal is obtained. The sequence of operations like pre milling treatment, conditioning, dehusking and splitting is normally common. Large variation exists in the steps followed in milling but basic unit operation remain the same. The most frequent form in which foot pulses are consumed is as the decorticated product known as dal. From a nutritional point of view, using pulses with or without milling have several advantages and disadvantages. Separation of husk decreases nutrients but improves digestibility or bioaccessibility. The extent of the losses depends upon the degree of milling and the distribution pattern of nutrients in the grain. During milling, the nutrient losses, particularly the vitamins and the minerals is very large. Therefore, it can be observed that milling has mutual effects on nutritional quality. Now, let us start with milling process. Milling process involves first cleaning followed by grading, then pitting and treatment milling and the last step in milling is polishing operations. The major steps involved in pulse milling are discussed below. Let us start with cleaning and grading. Pulses which are received at the mill first needs to be cleaned and size graded for yielding good quality dal with higher recovery. Even during dehusking operation, pulses are subjected to sieving. This separates out husk, broken, splits, gota which is dehusked pulse and whole pulses. Usually, two types of cleaners are used, reciprocating air screen cleaners and real screen cleaners. In reciprocating air screen cleaners, air is blown through two screens. This separates the lighter material such as dust, stalk, dried leaves, husk, etc. After cleaning and draining, it is pitting. Pitting is done by using emery coated roller. The emery coating is used for abrasive or refractory action, whole pulses are passed through abrasive roller machine for scratching of seed. This facilitates the entry of oil or water in the grain during pre-milling treatment. Next is pre-milling treatment. The treatment which is given for loosening of the husk from cotyledons which is attached through a gum layer it is called as pre-milling treatment. Mostly pre-milling treatments are developed for difficult to mill pulses. Commonly adopted pre-milling treatments are water soaking, oil and water application, mixing of sodium bicarbonate solution and thermal applications. For commercial milling in large capacity dal mills, oil and water treatment is commonly adopted. In household milling, water treatment is popularly used. Different methods are employed in different regions depending upon the type of grain. This also varies from mill to mill. Pre-treatments can be broadly classified into two. One is wet treatment and then dry treatment. In wet treatment method, soaking and drying are considered as effective technique to loosen the husk. This method has the advantage of facilitating dehusking and splitting the cotyledons giving less breakage. This can be attributed to lower dehusking percentage of grains in water treatment process. However, it has the disadvantage of being weather dependent and labor intensive. Dal produced by this method cooks better but takes longer time to cook. Commonly adopted red earth treatment is considered as wet method which is shown in screen. In this method, Grains are mixed with a paste of red earth after soaking in water for about 12 hours and heaping for about 16 hours. The grains are spread in thin layer in drying yards for 2 to 4 days. When dried, the red earth is removed by sieving and the grains are then milled on power operated stone or emery coated vertical chakki to yield dal. The second one which is the dry treatment. In dry milling treatment is reported to produce dal that cooks faster. However, losses due to broken and powdering are high. In dry method, oil or water application followed by drying are important steps in processing of pulses. In this process, after cleaning and grading, grains are pitted 
and then mix with about oil 1 percentage then the grains are spread for sun drying in thin layer for 2 to 3 days. At the end of the drying 2 to 5 percentage of water is sprayed mixed thoroughly and tempered for overnight. Tempered grains are dehusked in roller machines to give dehusked grains and dal. Now let us see what is tempering process. Once the pre-milling treatment is given, conditioning is done to have uniformity of treatment throughout the grain mass. This process gives time for better penetration of oil or water beneath the seed coat to dissolve the gums. Next step is drying. In most of the mills in India, sun drying method is commonly practiced. Grains are spread in thin layer on pakka floor under the sun and still frequently with rake or feet for even drying. This operation makes process of dal milling a very lengthy which requires 2 to 3 days. In this case, sun dried grains require more passes and consumes more energy. The drying time with the use of dryers ranges between 2 to 3 hours which results in tremendous time saving. Dryers are used in few mills that too in rainy seasons for drying of treated grains. The next step is dehusking and splitting. Dal mills by and large use emery rollers for dehusking and splitting. In case of difficult to mill pulses, more than 3 passes are required for complete milling. Easy to mill pulses take 1 or 2 passes in emery mill in order to achieve maximum milling. The physical, chemical and structural strength of the grain coupled with the functional and mechanical characteristics of processing units jointly play an important role. Grain properties such as hardness, load deformation behavior, shape, size density and variety of the grain have considerable effect on dal yield. The machine parameters such as roller speed, clearance, emery size etc. have vital role in play on dal recovery. As a result of milling, unhusked and dehusked whole grains, split cotyledons, broken husk and powder are obtained. Whole grains are passed again for further dehusking or splitting after water treatment. Husk and powder produced during milling is generally separated with the help of aspirator and are used as cattle feed. The last step polishing. Polishing is done to increase consumers appeal and is a form of value addition. Dal is polished in different ways such as nylon polish, oil or water polish, leather and makmal polish. Generally, polishing is done using soapstone, oil or water. Polishing gives uniform look and shine to each grain. Now let us see what are the advances in milling technology. Techniques used in advanced pre-milling treatments are very few. They are heat, chemical, enzymes etc which are used at various research organizations for milling of difficult to mill pulses. However, oil and water treatment is most prevalent in modern dal mills. Water soaking followed by sun drying is commonly adopted at rural levels for processing of difficult to mill pulses. Traditionally, water or oil treatments are given for loosening of husk. These traditional pre-milling techniques are labor intensive, wasteful and weather dependent. Attempts have been made by various research and development institutions to develop improved processes for pre-treatment of difficult to mill pulses. Different methods of modern technologies in milling of pulses are Panthanagar process which includes chemical treatment, Panthanagar process which includes enzymatic treatment, Central Institute of Agricultural Process and Central Food Technological Research Process. Now let us start with the first one which is Panthanagar process which is chemical treatment. In chemical treatment process, clean and graded difficult to mill grains are treated with 10 percent sodium bicarbonate solution which is mixed in the ratio of 30 is to 1. These grains are then heaped for 5 hours at 30 degrees Celsius followed by drying under the sun. The tempered and dried grains are passed through rollers. Panthanagar process utilizes traditional milling machinery. The milled product is clean and graded with a blower, cyclone separator 
and greater. It is seen that if pre-milling treatment is properly given, 91 to 95 percentage dehusking is achieved in single pass having 4 to 5 percentage whole grain. The husk, broken and powder are removed separately. The gota which is dehusked whole grain obtained is mixed with 2 to 2.5 percentage of water and kept for 4 hours for tempering. These grains are passed through splitter for dal making. About 80 to 90 percentage of total sodium content is removed with husk and powder. Whereas, the remaining traces of sodium in dal improves its cooking quality and storage characteristics. The dal recovery is about 80 percentage. Advantage of this method is that it eliminates the use of oil. The problem with this method is that the chemical solution goes with the husk and this may be harmful to cattle if it is used as cattle feed. Now let us see the second one which is Panthanagar process which is enzymatic treatment. Milling will be carried out on enzyme treated difficult to mill grains at different combinations of pre-treatment parameters. The parameters considered are moisture content of seeds, incubation period and temperature. Enzymatic pretreatment has positive effect on hulling efficiency. Hulling efficiency of untreated grains will be around 60.82 percentage when it compared with just water treatment it is around 73.9 percentage whereas the enzyme treated grains efficiency will be more which will be around 89.68 percentage. The enzyme treatment not only increases the hulling efficiency but it also reduces the amount of powder formed. Enzyme treatment improves digestibility of dal protein and reduces cooking time. The third advanced milling technique is CIAE process. In this process clean and graded difficult to mill grains are fed in roller mill for scratching. Once the scratching is over then grains are cleaned to separate the husk and the split grains. Whole and split grains are soaked in water at ambient temperature for 25 to 30 minutes to provide moisture content of about 35 percentage and then it is dried to 10 percentage moisture content. The dried grains are milled in a cylindrical abrasive mill to produce dehusked split dal. Split dal is separated from other constituents with an air screen grain cleaner. The average recovery for difficult to mill pulses is 75 percentage. This method eliminates the use of edible oil in milling process. The last one in advanced milling technology is CFTRI process. The technology developed at Central Food Technological Research Institute overcomes the major problems of weather dependent nature of pulse milling industry and gives high dal yield in lesser time. The process is independent of weather conditions and eliminates the use of oil. The loosening of husk is achieved by heating of grains in hot air current followed by tempering. Removal of husk and splitting of grains is achieved by improved processing machines. This conditioning technique through heat treatment and moisture adjustment of the clean size graded grains loosens the husk while making it fragile and brittle besides hardening the kernels. The process involves two passes in a dryer with 160 degrees Celsius hot air followed by tempering for 6 hours. The operation is continuous, replaces sun drying and carried out indoors. In this method, yield of dal is around 80 percentage. This method has advantages like less requirement of manpower, no need of drying yard, no requirement of edible oil, etc. Now let us conclude the session. Pulses are the cheapest and rich source of protein. Amino acid composition of pulses is complementary to that of cereals. Legumes go through several processes before they are ready to be used as ingredient in food preparations. The processes includes cleaning, drying, sorting, splitting, milling and fractionating. Because of problems like labor intensive, time consuming and incurred losses, many modern technologies is replaced to traditional milling process. During milling, dal is split into smaller sizes which renders it convenient for cooking. Based on the bonding between the husk and cotyledons, Pulses are divided into difficult to mill pulses and easy to mill pulses. The initial step of milling dehusking helps to remove the husk from the cotyledon and then the pulses are cleaned and split into dal. Milling process differs from crop to crop, cultivator to cultivator, 
and place to place. There are four different types of milling. They are home scale milling, cottage scale milling, commercial scale milling and traditional milling. In home scale milling, pestle and mortars are used whereas in cottage scale milling, hand operated wooden or stone chucky sheller is used. Yield obtained in home scale milling is lesser when compared with other milling techniques. Traditional milling method includes wet and dry treatment. For the pre-treatment of pulses, red earth is used in wet treatment while oil is used in dry treatment. Polishing is the last step of milling which increase the consumer's appeal. Advanced milling technologies includes Panthanagar chemical and enzyme treatment, CIAE and CFTRI process. The physical, chemical and structural strength of grain coupled with functional and mechanical characteristics of processing units jointly play an important role in milling. Thank you.